I'm uh, Fredrik Karen. I'm the editor-in-chief and publisher of uh, Svenska Dagbladet, which is an uh, old legacy uh, media uh, printed newspaper. It's been around since 1884. Uh, and as every other media company right now, we are in the midst of a very, very large digital, digital transformation, of course, uh, trying to find uh, sustainable business models for the future. Uh, and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the way that we digitalized our uh, printed newspaper archive and the way that we use it in the daily, uh, uh, in the daily news production. Uh, and I'm also having, uh, I'm also going to share a, a short story of the way that we co uh, cooperated with the uh, car manufacturer Volvo uh, in creating a story together with them uh, using their archives. This is uh, uh, the archive, the newspaper archive uh, um, that we've been digitalizing together with the Royal Library here in Stockholm. Uh, so every newspaper, every printed newspaper uh, that we did uh, for, for since 1880, 1884, so un 133 years, uh, has, uh, they kept the copy at the Royal Lab Library. And uh, I think it was like seven years ago or so that we, together with them, decided that we need to, to digitalize this archive and also try to, uh, to provide it with some meta, uh, uh, metadata uh, to, to be uh, useful for readers. And uh, in October last year, we launched this archive on the website, on, on Svenska Dagbladet website. Uh, so it's searchable for all our subscribers. So now Svenska Dagbladet has about 140,000 print subscribers and 45,000 digital subscribers. Uh, so uh, that makes us the uh, second largest newspaper in Sweden. Uh, and this is just a, a short glimpse of, of uh, the articles that we have written about uh, the, former uh, the former prime minister of Sweden, Olof Palme, which was uh, assassinated, uh, murdered on an open street just a few kilometers from where we are now in 1986. And of course, uh, this is uh, um, um, from 18, uh, just, and it was, uh, um, I think it was the 28th of February, 1986 that he died, and from uh, until then we have written 1,700 1, articles about him. And of course, after that, uh, we have written many, many, many more since the investigation of the murder took place, and it's still going on, actually. The case is still open, and uh, you might know that the, the murder was, has never been found. Uh, this is just one way of using the archive. Uh, and when we launched it in, in October last year, uh, until from October, from the 15th of October until the, the uh, 31st uh, of uh, December, uh, 150,000 unique visitors uh, came into the archive, readers uh, interested in, in the stories that we have written for 133 years. And of course, this is a gold mine if you're interested in, in uh, the modern history of Sweden. Uh, you can read all about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the big major stories that we covered through these years. Uh, the end of World War II, how we covered it, uh, and, and so forth, all the major uh, big news events taking place. Uh, we also use this archive uh, in the daily news work, actually. So when Fidel Castro died, uh, we used and we, we, we digged into the archive uh, and also could present stories that took place uh, in the 1970s. One of them was when Olof Palme visited Cuba uh, and held a speech in front of 100,000 uh, Cubans. And, and of course, was very criticized about that back here in Sweden in those days. And those stories are easily forgotten uh, now uh, among the you know, new modern readers. They don't know about this, but it, as we can use the archive to actually publish uh, new stories uh, when new, new news events take place uh, and, and dig into it and, and, uh, and give a broader coverage 
of, uh, of, in this case, Fidel Castro and the relationships to Sweden and Cuba. We also can use it as more of a fun, a fun way of storytelling. This is about uh, uh, the Christmas. This one was published around Christmas uh, last year. And we dig into the, Chris, into the archive and found out what was Christmas like back in the 1890s. And it, and it seems to be as, as stressful as it is today. People were back in those days also hunting around the city for Christmas gifts, uh, cooking food. And um, when we complain about it's very stressful around Christmas for our modern society, well, it was pretty much the same back in those days. And that is something that I think could be that, that people uh, uh, can find quite amusing to read about. Uh, so it's easy for us to, to go into the archive, pick up a story and show it to the readers uh, and they can read for themselves. Uh, it's also useful for readers to go in and search for stories about themselves or their relatives. And it's, uh, we, had, uh, uh, we have had different kinds of competitions that, pe that we, that we uh, ask people to go in and search and share stories about them, th themselves or their relatives, stories that we have written about. This one is uh, quite nice. Uh, it was a woman who never, uh, her, her, pa her parents divorced and there was a bit of a conflict around her family. Uh, no one uh, knew about their wedding. There was something that wasn't talked about in the, in the family. And, uh, and she tried to find out for years and years what happened during this wedding, where, to, where did it took place, what's the story behind it. And uh, she could go, when we opened up the archive, she could actually go in and see if Svenska Dagblad had written anything about her family, uh, search for their names, and she found the story about her parents' wedding. So that was something that she could be uh, to, uh, shared uh, among, uh, uh, among her family, of course, but, but the great knowledge for herself. So that is very useful, and, and we can see that people actually are doing that. They're entering their archive, they're searching for their families, events around the families, specific years, specific dates, to find out more. So, that's just a little short glimpse of how we use the archive in the daily news production. Uh, I'm also, uh, uh, we, we also work with different kinds of companies, Swedish legacy companies mainly, because we are in, uh, uh, for Svenska Dagbladet, we are, our core, core news values are that we are, uh, we are covering news, that's foreign and domestic news, but we are also uh, quite big in business news. That is something that is important for us. And, uh, um, and of course, history of big, uh, popular, uh, well-known Swedish companies is, is one of our core uh, storytelling issues and this is something that we did together with Volvo uh, just uh, a few months ago where we uh, dug into their uh, ar archive and they were very generous about it and they opened up for us to come in and we also shared stories from our ar archive to them and uh, this is a picture uh, from Volvo's uh, picture gallery that has never been shown before to the Swedish public uh, and it's uh, uh, the, the, num the two million Volvo car producted in, in 1972. And that was the uh, former very famous CEO of the company, Pagge Gyllenhammer, who was in the picture. Uh, and, uh, and that was due to that they were very generous about their, uh, uh, and transparent about their archive. It was possible for us to show this picture to our readers. It's never been shown before. This is another one uh, that was very rare, never been shown before either from the Volvo archive. Uh, this is from the production line in the factory in Gothenburg, uh, where all the uh, manufacturers are actually wearing a cap, which has never been, uh, didn't know about before. Uh, so this is also a quite rare picture that we got from Volvo. And we could provide them with pictures uh, that they have never seen before. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, this is from 1927, uh, and that's the um, 
one of the first, uh, uh, first actually Volvo cars uh, that was shown to the public uh, that Svenska Dagbladet at that time took a picture of and published. And um, we have it in our archive, and now we could share it with Volvo, so they have it as well. Thank you.